Hey guys, we're back with a new video. Today I'm going to show you how to install a garage door opener. Let's go. All right, so this is the Chain Drive 550 series from Genie. The model number is 2035 TKO. These are the instructions that they give you, and these things are enormous. Look at this. Super detailed, color coded. Each step uses a color coded bag. We're gonna run through assembling this. I'm gonna show you step by step how to do it. So you don't have to read the manual, you can just watch this video. All right, so for step one, we're gonna need the orange bag. All right, and we're gonna need our track pieces here. You want this end piece that has this little window cut out of it because we're gonna install the pulley for the chain on here. All right, so what we need is this pulley, this clevis pin. Now the clevis pin looks like a bolt without any threads and it has a little hole on the end here. And all we're gonna do is simply drop that through the hole here. We're gonna take one of these cutter pins and mount that on there. Now this second hole here, this is where this bolt goes through. And this is basically just like a hard stop. We'll get this bolt tightened up. Now the next step is to take this slide piece right here. And if you look at it, it says door. This is the piece right here where the pulley is that's going to be facing where the door is. So we wanna slide this over here. So like I mentioned, this is just a physical stop for this slide and we're pointing towards the door. This is the door side. Then the rest of this is super easy. All we're doing is we're actually connecting the rest of these track pieces together. And here's the last piece. We wanna make sure this is actually facing down here. This is where the emergency release is for the door. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to this side now and we're actually going to attach the sprocket assembly. That's this piece right here. Now, when we go to mount this, we want this flat portion here facing down because that's the side that's gonna mount to the power head. So that just slips inside of there like that. And then there's also this retaining strap. We wanna just place that on here for now. Our next step is the chain. And this chain does go on a certain way. Now, if you have the belt drive version of this, teeth on the belt actually have to face the rail. They have to be inwards. Now, it's probably a good time if you have gloves to use them because this is a little greasy. Now you You'll notice on the chain itself, there is a silver and a gold colored bolt on here. Now, this step is really important to make sure you use the right one on the right side. All right, now our next step is to route the chain and the chain is gonna be a pain in the butt, I'm not gonna lie to you. This thing wants to go all over the place. It's twisted up, it's just a pain. So take your time. What you want is you want the silver end at this sprocket on the back with the bracket and you want the gold end towards where the front of the door is going to be and we're going to run that all the way back down to the other end for our next step we're going to need this little spanner here this side that says door has to go to the gold colored bolt all right so we have the gold colored bolt on the chain and we want to make sure we have the door side on here and you're going to be like hey why isn't this thing threading on it's actually reverse thread so you want to make sure that the chain is on this sprocket here now if you had a hard time getting the chain through the inside of this slide here it's most likely because your release here wasn't deactivated and there's a little tab that actually sticks up inside of that tube that's gonna catch the chain. So what we wanna do is we wanna basically just get a couple threads started on here. We'll put the silver bolt on the opposite side here. And then as you twist, it's actually gonna pull both together. All right, now you wanna move your turnbuckle assembly into the middle of the track. And what we wanna do is we wanna tighten this and we wanna measure on the opposite side of where the turnbuckle is on this track here. We wanna make sure that we have about a quarter inch. So we wanna tighten that just a little bit more. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna lock down these nuts on here. We don't want them twisted. We wanna make sure that this chain is flat here. And we're gonna put one wrench on the turnbuckle and we're gonna take the other wrench, put it on that jam nut and we're just gonna tighten it. All right, so our next step is to mount the power head to the track and chain assembly. And we need four of these self-tapping screws that it came with. On this sprocket here, the internals of the sprocket is splined, and then you'll notice the drive shaft is splined also. So we basically just need to mesh these two up, and then we have two mounting holes here that will go into the two plastic pieces here, and then we can slide this bracket, and that will go to here and this other mounting hole here. Now, when you're putting this on the power head, you wanna make sure that the sockets for the bulbs are towards the back. Same with the cord, towards the back, and press everything down just like that. Okay, so that portion is done. All right, so the next part, if you do have someone assist you, it will definitely help. What you need to do is you need to raise your garage door now, and this top panel actually has a high point. 
as it's coming over this top piece of track right here, it's actually going to raise up above that track. And what you need to do is you need to measure from your ceiling to the top portion of that door. I've already measured mine, it's exactly 12 inches, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. See that top edge of the door? It goes up and then it actually drops. That portion where it's at its highest, right there, is where you need to measure. We need to take that 12 inches from the ceiling, measure down, we need to mark that 12 inches, and then we need to go up two and a half inches and make a mark there. And that's gonna be the center point of the bracket that goes on here. We're gonna center this on our lines that we just put. And then we have some lag screws to mount in here. And what we have to use is a 5 30 seconds drill bit. And we need to make some pilot holes in here and that's so it doesn't split the wood. Okay, make sure those are really snug. And then our next step is to actually attach that power head and track assembly to this. I'm actually gonna put a kneeling pad on the ground here because I'm gonna rest the power head on that and I wanna keep it from getting all scratched up. If you have another person to help you, you can actually have them hold the power unit, but we need to attach this piece right here onto the very top hole here with this clevis pin and cotter pin. I move my little pad down here, down so this is kind of sitting on the ground here, and that's all there is to getting this mounted on this side. So if you don't have a helper to give you a hand uh, holding this end while you're connecting this end, that's a good option. All right, now at this point, if you're just replacing an existing opener, all you would do would be to swing your power head up mount it onto your bracket on the ceiling. But as you notice, I don't have a bracket. So this applies to you guys that are doing new installs. You have to buy a piece of angle bracket like this and you can get this at any of the big box stores. They sell it down next to the hardware aisle. Um, we're gonna mount this up there, lag screw it into the studs. And it looks like we need to be about 13 and a half inches long for the support pieces. All right, so I wasn't a fan of the kind of chintzy mounts that the garage door opener came with. And the whole spacing on here is every two inches. And for the distance I had from the ceiling down to the power head, that wasn't gonna work. I needed a spot in between. So I actually went to Lowe's and I bought a three foot stick of this. And these holes are actually spaced every inch and every other hole is actually slotted. So it gives me a little fine adjustment. So we're gonna mount this to the power head. We're gonna lift the power head into place and we'll get that bolted to the bracket on the ceiling. So I'm just using the 5 16 bolts and locking nuts that came with the kits. And then for mounting to the top, I'm just using that same 5 16 hardware. I bought some 5 16 washers, split washers, and nuts. And if you notice from the side, this is kind of skewed back. So what I'm gonna do is actually gonna loosen these up here and we're gonna move them to the hole in front of them. Now, one other thing too here, when you're mounting this, and you're trying to center this, especially if you're installing from scratch, you wanna make sure that your sight line down the track towards the middle of the door is pretty straight. All right, so we have our power head mounted. As you can see here, I put this cross member in also, and that's just gonna keep this thing from moving from side to side. But if you're just replacing an existing garage door opener, you don't have to worry about all of this stuff unless you just need to adjust the lengths of your downward supports for the new power head. All right, now we need to mount our bracket for our carriage assembly here and our opener. And what we wanna do is we wanna have this center line here about as close to the center line of the top rollers on either side of the door. And it's gonna go right about here. So we're just gonna mark this with a Sharpie. We're gonna take a 1 8 drill bit and we're gonna pilot drill some holes in here. All right, now this bracket here, the shorter piece of the L shape on here goes towards the door itself. So we're just gonna slide this clevis piece through here and through the very first hole on this. And then we'll put our cotter pin in. That part is done, super simple. Now we need to get the other piece mounted to here and to the carriage assembly. All right, so at this point, you have to obviously make sure this is straight up and down and that allows you to slide it past that, that adjuster. And we need to get this over in this area. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this second metal bar, the other clevis pin and cotter pin that we have. And once that's through, we can attach our cotter pin. And then this next step is kind of important here. So you wanna move this forward and line up the holes, right? So we're gonna be bolting through two sets of holes. They actually do line up and I'll show you that, all right? Now you see how 
actually three of the holes line up. All right, so let's get this all bolted up here. So I'm gonna match these up and I wanna use the top and the bottom. I'm gonna do the two holes that are furthest away from each other. Do make sure they're definitely tight. Okay, and then we're gonna attach our emergency release cord on here and that little red handle next. We're gonna take the little red plastic piece that they gave us. We're gonna put a knot in the rope that came with it. We're actually gonna double knot it here and we'll just double knot this one too. Normal operation is this flipped up to the side. If I need to release the door to be able to manually open it, just say I don't have any power, I just simply pull down on this cord. All right, so we're on to the next to last step for this installation, and that is going to be wiring the garage door opener in. So we have two lower, basically photo eye sensors that are gonna detect if anything is in the path of the garage door closing. So their safety sensors allows the garage door to reverse. And then we also need to run the wiring from the power head over to the wall where we're gonna be mounting our indoor garage door control. For the Genie garage door opener anyways, this next step is the yellow hardware bag. And inside of this bag are the transmitter and receiver. And we do have to actually mount these at a certain height above the floor. Here's the wiring. They give you about 90 feet of wiring and about 40 of these wire clips here. If you find that you need more than they gave you in the kit, you can actually buy these at either Lowe's or Home Depot, and they're about six or seven bucks for 25. All right, now we're gonna be mounting these sensors on either side of our garage door. It does not really matter which one's on the left, which one's on the right, as long as they are aligned. Now, there is a specific distance from the floor to the center of where this beam goes, and the minimum distance is five inches, the max is six. I'm just gonna measure up, and I'm gonna mark my five and my six, and we're just gonna split that difference. All right, and I just wanna show you, right? Five inch minimum, six inch max to the center of the beam. We're at five and a half. So I just split the difference. All right, so we have both of these mounted now and we'll do our alignment once everything's wired up. All right, now I wanna give you one quick tip here. So they want you to wire each of the sensors individually and run them back to the power head. Well, you actually don't have to do that because if you look at the instructions, they both land on the same two terminals. So if you look at the instructions here, striped wires to terminal one, white wires to terminal two for the photo cell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna wire one photo cell to the other, make sure the polarity, that black striped wire is on the same terminals on both of them, and I'm gonna run one wire back to the power head. All right, and all you have to do is loosen these up. I like to put a little loop around them that allows you to hook it around that screw. All right, and then once both wires are connected is I'm gonna leave a little slack here just in case these ever get damaged or something. All right, now all we're gonna do is just staple this up. We're gonna run up the side of the garage door. All right, and we're gonna put our first staple kind of close to it. So all I'm essentially doing is I'm doubling up or paralleling the wires from sensor to sensor. And then that's gonna save me an additional run all the way back to the power head right there. We need to wire into terminals one and two on here. And you're gonna need a little screwdriver to be able to put these in. So what you need to do is you actually need to depress the terminal down and push the wire in. All right, now we're wiring in the wall control. And all I simply did is I ran the wire. I'm actually gonna start at the power head this time and run back to the wall control. So the striped wire goes to terminal four. You'll see that it's actually a black terminal. And the white wire goes to the white terminal, terminal three. And that's pretty much everything as far as wiring is concerned besides plugging this in. All right, now all I need to do is I need to run this wire all the way over to where I'm mounting my wall control unit. Okay, and then this part's super simple. Just tighten them both on there and then run that wire up that little channel right there and then we'll screw this into the wall. And that's all there is to wiring in your garage door. What we need to do now is install some light bulbs. Now it does not come with light bulbs, unfortunately. So I'm just gonna use these 60 watt LEDs. All right guys, moment of truth. Now it's time to plug this in. Don't expect to see anything happen right away on the opener itself. But one thing you do wanna check for is those photocell beams that we put in. So they should have a red light on this side and a green light on that side. And as you can see, neither of them are blinking. So that means that they are perfectly aligned and I don't even need to mess with them. All right, and over at our wall module, you will see that we have a red light. So we know that that wiring is good on this guy. 
All right, so we're gonna set our upper and lower limits, and if you have your garage door locked, you wanna make sure, obviously, that you undo that. All right, so our next step is to open up the garage door and get it locked into place. Now, we really wanna have this piece right here in about the middle position, because when we're setting our upper and lower limits for the door, we wanna make sure that it's not already at one of those limits. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, pull that to the side so that re-engages the carriage, and then we're gonna lift the door until it locks into place. Oh, that was a little rough. All right, so we have the door locked in place with the carriage lock, and now I'm gonna show you how to set the upper and lower limits and test the force retraction. All right, so we're gonna set our down limit first, and what we wanna do is we wanna press and hold the down arrow button, and the long LED will light blue. So that would be the minus button, so we're gonna hold it, and you should see that it's blue, and it is blinking, okay? Once it's flashing blue, then we can use the minus button to set the door down. Okay, now I'm just gonna keep hitting this until I get the door down. And we wanna make sure that the gasket on the bottom is compressed a little bit. So that's kinda of locked in place and it's forcing that seal down. Okay, now that we have that lower limit set, we wanna press this program set button and hold that. And then you'll notice both the lights will come on and then they'll go off. So all we need to do now is set the upper limit. So we're gonna hold the plus button, which is the right button. You'll see it blinking. And then all we need to do to raise the door is to hold that. All right, now to set the upper limit, you basically just want the bottom of the door level with the header. All right, so you see we're all the way back and you'll see that the garage door is level with the header here. Now we're gonna hit that same set program button once more. We'll see both lights come on again and then they'll shut off. And the upper and lower limits are now programmed. All right, so we're gonna test out the beam interrupting feature here. So I'm gonna block this with my foot. You'll see that it's flashing. And I'm gonna try to close the door. It'll open. If I try to hit the button again, it's just gonna keep opening. It's not gonna shut. While the door is closing, let's interrupt this. You'll see that it stops and it starts reversing. All right, now if we wanna test the force stop on here, so just say something was left in here but it's not breaking the beam, they want you to test this with a two by four. So let's close the door and see what happens. It should start reversing once it hits that. We know that's working. And that's all there is to testing the actual garage door opener. All right, now this door does come with two key fobs. You can actually take the key fobs and put this little clip in the back side here and clip it to your visor, or you can actually just put it on your keychain. And then it comes with this outdoor keypad that we'll install. This thing's actually really solid, so it's pretty nice. All right, now to program the remote, and you can use this remote with multiple garage doors, so I'm probably gonna put the right side door on the top one and the left side door on the bottom one. All you wanna do is remove this right here. Now the battery's active in here, I'm gonna show you how to program each of these key remotes. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna hold the set and program button, right? We'll see that light blinking purple in there, and then we take our remote and select the button that we want. We wanna be about nine feet at maximum away from this, and we're gonna press whatever button we want to control this twice, and then once the lights go out, it's programmed, and then we should be able to activate the door with this button now. All right, now programming this is just as easy as the key fobs. So what we wanna do is we wanna go into that programming mode again. So we're gonna hold our set program button until the blue and purple lights come on. Okay, and then you wanna make sure that this is not lit up. So we're gonna type three, five, seven. And then we're gonna hit the up down button three to four times slowly until the garage door operates. All right, now to program your own custom code into this, what you need to do is you need to type that factory code of 357 and then press the program key. And then you can enter a three to eight digit code of your choosing in here. Once you enter that code, press the program key once more. And then this is programmed with your new custom code. Now all we have to do is use the two provided mounting screws and mount this outside. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video. Make sure to hit that like and that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Until next time.